Hello everyone, my name is Raul Sanchez and I will be explaining how I will be tackling our new time build game. First, I want to explain the processes that are needed in order to achieve the success of this game. In order to really understand the project and get the ball going, we will, be, we will need to be able to change the program into an MVC pattern. MVC means Model, View, and Controller. We will then need to add a new part to our high-low game by putting a timer on the side of the screen. It will be on a timer that will update every second, but also give the user the ability to still be able to play the game at the same time. To do this, we will be using multi-threading to get this done. Multi-threading will be a timer class, and the concept of multi-threading needs a proper understanding of these two terms. And the terms are a process and a thread. A process is a program being executed, and also a process can be further divided into independent units known as threads. Once we implement multi-threading in our old game, we will then be able to design a new game that implements the build aspect with a set of new rules, while at last we build the UML design to show which classes help support each other and what got the ball rolling for us into the assignment. Now, some things and some skills that we need to know for this assignment are object-oriented programming, which at this point, everyone should have the skill down in order to implement and instantiate methods to main to make the program work. We will also need to learn a new concept of multi-threading and how to implement it into our code. So for this week's reading, it's gonna be very important to catch up and to get into that multi-threading into our piece of program and make it work. Also, we will need to have the basic fundamentals of using JFrame and its components to build our new game. While at last, we need to know MVC and how to use event listeners. So what does MVC actually mean or what does it do? Well, the M it stands for model, and this represents a set of classes that describe the business logic and data logic, while the V stands for view and represents the UI components like CSS, jQuery, HTML, and our JFrame. The C stands for controller and is responsible to for processes that are incoming requests. It receives input from the user via the view, then processes the user's data with the help of model and passing the results back to the view. Last, we will look at how we can implement MVC in our time build game. We must first redesign our program from our previous assignment to fit an MVC design pattern, while also making the program work from the previous assignment. We will then need to implement a multi-threading implementation to our program, which we will be able to add a timer to our window and let the user stop and start to control the timer while we are letting the user still be able to play the game at the exact same time. To conclude, this assignment using this new method, we can make a new game in phase three, which sets a new game and also uses the timer for references of how long the user is in the game. To complete this assignment, we will be, need to be able to stack card from the top deck until the user does not have any more playable cards remaining. And if the user does not have any cards remaining, they must push the I cannot play button. And in the end, we'll gather the results and whoever has the most I cannot play will win. So for our assignment and our specific code, multi-threading is a Java feature that allows concurrent execution of two or more parts of a program maximizing utilization of CPU. We will create a class that extends the java.link.thread class. This class overrides the run method available in the thread class. A thread begins its life inside run method. We create an object of our new class and call start method to start the execution of a thread. Start invokes the run method on the thread object. We will implement a new method for multi-threading to get a timer to be set inside a class and instantiate into our main while not interfering with our code. 
we will use a try catch with the exception approach to get to the statement of our timer. And when ran on our main, we will differentiate the two different threads for each of our programs to one, while also making them run together and not have any problems with the code. Thank you.